the magic of the season. Welcome to my channel, it's Rebecca. Today I'm fulfilling my wish myself. Like, this isn't real. I'm pretending. <laughs> that if I were in a Hallmark Christmas movie, what would I look like? And I mean, you know, maybe better than what I could do, but I'd like to think that this is, this would be kind of my, my vision. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, if you're new. It's me, I'm Rebecca, I'm 51. I, I've been watching Hallmark movies for well over 10, before it was a thing, you know? I bet you, I wanna know who out there was watching Hallmark before the internet knew about Hallmark. Look, I just love a sappy rom-com and I love it around the holidays. I love everything that has like, you know, white on white with um, a red lip, okay? So we're going very, uh, very cliche. We're, we're doing some cliche holiday makeup. How about that? I hope you have fun. I have a sponsor for today. For decades and generations, makeup has been empowering. It can be a source of activism and change in society. And I think we are in a movement, not just a beauty movement, but for our planet and for ourselves. And we King County Hazardous Waste Management Program is helping the public learn more about what is in their products. Beauty products, skincare, makeup, all of it should be safe for us. Not just for us, but for the planet as well. We need to have an entire system of legislation, manufacturing, and distribution to be involved. Thank you, King County Hazardous Waste Management Program. Check my links in my description box, check their website and their resources, and also, if you are not local, check your community and see what's going on there. And remember, knowledge is power, and we have a right to know. Well, let's do the makeup. I'm not gonna talk about specifically what I'm using. I will list it in the description box with affiliate links if you want to purchase, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much, because I get a little commission, and <laughs> Who doesn't like a little commission around the holidays? So we are going for flawless kind of, but not too, you know, we're, we're going for HD upgrade television. Like I think that people, as much as they're wearing probably a lot of makeup on television, I think that it's done really well where their skin looks like skin. Newscasters might be a little different. I have a feeling that when you're watching football and those uh, reporters on the sidelines, I think they have a ton of makeup on. And I only say that one because I have seen them close up and I've been in a news studio where I thought I was wearing a really good full face of makeup. Um, I was like, on there for something you know with the local news in my neighborhood or whatever and then i'm standing next to the weather girl and i am washed away because she's got like fake eyelashes on and she's you know got her contour going and i'm just standing there with my regular makeup and i look like like nothing anyway. okay let's talk about wardrobe when it comes to that sort of Christmas film, holiday, you know, where um, they're wearing really cute coordinated outfits, but it's not necessarily for warmth, right? Right? Oh my gosh, that's, that was, that's always my favorite. It's like, they're wearing a really cute coat and it matches the sweater underneath and they've just got like a scarf kind of casually over the, their lapel and they're not wearing a hat and they're not wearing gloves. And it's probably because they filmed it somewhere in like Utah or uh, Vancouver in August <laughs> and they're, they are absolutely sweating. Um, so I looked up a couple of the movies of like where they're filmed and I was cracking up because 
uh, they were talking about, so one was filmed in like, I think it was August or September and yeah, no, I think it was July or August in Utah. And I'm just thinking, wow, that must have been so incredibly difficult. And I remember a film that was the one that is set in Italy from a couple years ago. And they filmed in the summer during like peak tourist season. And they had to film at like 6 a.m. So one, they wouldn't battle crowds. And two, so they wouldn't have it like 90 degrees. And also so the sun would look right. Because I think a lot of times what happens with these films is if you've, have you noticed how it's sunny and it's snowing? <laughs> it's my favorite. I bet you these set designers and property masters have to really, really work extra hard. Oh, I love it. Who needs realism? I wanna look cute right out of bed. And I want my house to be clean and the tree to be decorated and I want garland on every surface, right? Have you noticed that? That was something I looked at. Look at the backdrop. Look at, look at when you are watching these films, look at what's in the background and how like the kitchen cabinets have lights just around every, every corner. Who does that? Nobody does that. Nobody puts that many Christmas lights in their kitchen. <laughs> Just cracks me up. Ah, again, kudos to those said designers and those property people because they're just working overtime. They're really all shopping at home goods in the local towns that they're filming in and like, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, set design, um, lots of home decor, nobody eats. They only have cocoa. Like, it, everyone's like, everyone for cocoa? And all I can think of is, do they have lactose-free cocoa? Are they, when they're, why, why not a latte? Like, can someone please drink coffee? <laughs> no, they're drinking coffee. But it just was cracking me up because I'm like, oh man, I need, I need an almond milk latte or maybe an almond milk peppermint mocha. I love it when they're at like a community center and it's just so perfect on the inside. Like these community centers look like pretty bougie, right? <laughs> okay, something else that I find kind of strange. Do rich people and society people have parties on Christmas Eve? No. Who's having, who's having like a gala for their charity on Christmas Eve? No one. My mom was watching Hallmark with me when I was spending time with her after my dad died. And she had never really watched Hallmark. She doesn't watch TV. So I had the TV on and I turned it on Hallmark and I, we were watching movies. I had Christmas movies on and I'm just sort of hanging out with her, doing other stuff on my laptop, but I have a Chris. And so my mom looks up and she's like, oh, who's that? You know, and I'm thinking, dude, I don't know, some guy, some guy from the, from the show. And she's like, well, he has really nice hair. And I'm looking you know, you're right, mom, he does. He does have really nice hair. And then, you know, the woman, whatever main character comes, comes along and then she's like, oh, is that his girlfriend? I'm like, well, <laughs> that's his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> they were high school sweethearts. They were high school sweethearts, but then she moved away to uh, pursue her career and st he stayed back to um, support his family business. <laughs> and she's home for the holidays 
and um, they're gonna rekindle their romance. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, well, she has nice hair too, and she's not wearing a very warm jacket. And I'm like, oh my God, mom, mom, you are cracking me up. Then another guy comes along, right? There's always another guy. And she's like, now who's he? I'm like, oh, that, that's her assistant who secretly loves her. He came with her to, uh, to help with this work assignment. And then she's like, he has really nice hair too. Oh. But I think I like the other guy's hair better. I hope she gets with him. And I'm just like, oh my God, mom. My mom rates her Christmas movie character leading men by their hair. She'll be like, oh, he has very nice hair. Yes, yes, she should pick him. He has very nice hair. My mom's got a thing for hair. It is so funny. There's something about like if a man has kind of a nice thick head of hair and especially if it's a little bit wavy. Oh yeah, she's like, oh, that's nice hair. So something else I wanted to say about these Christmas films, and I think there's a science to them. There has to be some kind of background music that they use in a certain pitch that helps in a good way, like your serotonin or your dopamine. Because you know how in horror films or suspense films um, or even series on TV, they have, um, uh, there's, they have, a, sometimes you don't even hear it, but it'll be there and you'll not realize you're hearing it until you have to kind of like listen for it. And it's a chord. It's a chord of music that is supposed to create tension in your subconscious and you don't even know it. I, uh, I think that these friendly rom-com holiday movies are the opposite. And it's to facilitate a more happy, peaceful, feeling. And I think that's why a lot of us turn them on as like almost background. I mean, I do. I'll be like editing on my laptop, but I'll have, you know, a Christmas movie, some kind of Hallmark Christmas movie. I guess other networks and streaming does has their own as well. But you know what I mean? It's like, um, they are very settling, very calming. But we've covered wardrobe. Oh, they're always wearing heels in the snow. Have you noticed that too? I'm like, wow, does anyone wear, I mean, sometimes they have boots on, but honestly, a lot of them are wearing like pumps, <laughs> some kind of heel going, how are they wearing that? <laughs> but again, it's because they're filmed in July. <laughs> now, I did say this is going to be kind of a, a glam, understated glam, because it's going to be like full face of makeup, but it looks, it's kind of like your natural neutrals but I actually am gonna put on a red lip. So we're doing whatever the protagonist, the female protagonist in the film, what she's gonna be wearing to the Christmas party. That is the look I am going for. Yeah. I think I'm going to, I think I'm probably gonna put a mascara on off camera. I'm going to do mascara and then I'm going to do my lips and it's going to be red. Oh, I look kind of pale. I'm definitely going to be adding more cheek products after I do my lipstick. So let's talk about the perfect holiday lip for a second. If you're afraid to wear red or you don't want it to be messy, 
One of the things I do is apply a nude liner first, which I have already done, and that is kind of just to kind of match my lip. And you can then take, what I like to do is take a slightly darker nude liner not you can do a red like a burgundy or some other deeper shade and i like to just kind of kind of overline but just a little not severe severe okay Okay, so then you take your red lip. I just apply it. Okay, so pretty good, right? Now, I am going to do a couple things for insurance purposes. <laughs> Advantages of a red, a matte red, are that then it stays put, it doesn't transfer. Um, I typically don't go glossy with darker shades because for me, I just feel messier. <laughs> if I'm wearing a darker gloss. So, uh, when I have applied the lipstick, I do the finger thing, which is you put your finger in your mouth and then you pull it out. Okay. And then that way you get the lipstick away from the interior of your lips. All right, we've got that. Now then, I like to take... Uh, my hanger and just kind of and kind of blotting pardon the faces and then you want to blot but gently it's a nice Leave that for my husband. <laughs> With a note that says, please clean up your whiskers from the sink. Um, so I'm blotting, but I'm not, I'm not kind of, I feel like we blot too, sometimes, or we were told a long time ago to blot our lipstick and it was like a little, a little aggressive. So I just like to gently blot. If you want a more muted, Red, like the shade is the same, but the intensity is slightly less. This is a good method for that. And then you're not necessarily, you're kind of making a lip stain. You just kind of keep rubbing it into your lips, not on your teeth. It's not transfer proof. It's not, you know, it is going to be like, you know, leave a, a mark on a coffee cup or a champagne glass. Um, it's not like if you kiss someone, you're just gonna look, I mean, it's gonna mess up, but it isn't going to want to travel and it's not going to get on your teeth. So then you can either leave it the way it is, or if you wanna just zhuzh it up a little bit, Something to do is, again, go in with a darker liner, a deeper coffee tone, or just a deeper nude. And I like to make a little bit of a shadow. If you mess up, it's okay. That's what a brush and concealer are for. Just softening my cupid's bow. 
Okay. They're calling this the concealer trick. I mean, okay. I don't... Yeah, whatever. Um, if you want to make it a little more ombre. So a little bit of concealer. Just really just kind of blotted. Just sort of ombres it out, right? And then I like to take, you can ha use a gloss, you can use a, high, a cream highlighter, and just take a little bit of the pearly shimmer shade and kind of kind of do that. And then you've just really given a dimension and I think it just makes everything a little bit more alluring and polished and captivating and I am using a lot of expensive words. Um, I'm gonna add a little more blush, really really get it in there kind of kind of old old school Hollywood right a little bit of blush right here which I don't know why people do that because that's where my nose gets red anyway I'm always just trying to cover up that way but okay well thank you so much for watching I hope that was fun and uh, thanks to my sponsor Please check my description box. Thank you so much, Hazardous Waste Program, for sponsoring this video. You guys are the best, and I truly am proud of my work with them, and thank you so much for sponsoring. Again, check your community.